Hi, everybody. So before I start talking about what's happened today in court, I just want to remind everybody that this case is about Abby and Libby and hopefully getting justice for them as soon as possible. I think sometimes it gets lost with all this trying to figure out all this other outside nonsense that this horrible thing occurred to them and their families. So that's that. Um, let me stop that. And hi, everybody. I'm going to start sharing my PowerPoint. Yes, yeah, a crazy day. Hold up. Wait a minute. Um, <laughs> just a general chat overview. I have slow mode on to 60 seconds between messages you can send because unfortunately the chat goes by fast and I want everybody to be able to read all your lovely comments. It's only subscribers only to chat, uh, slow down the chat and prevent trolls and spam. Please be polite to other people. Um, don't hate others who have a different theories just so you can feel better about yourself. If I don't highlight your comment, it does not mean I disagree with you or dislike you. There's just too many comments. In the top left of the chat, it says um, it defaults to top chat, but you can change that to live chat to see all the ridiculous comments that people are posting. <laughs> um, I, like I said, this is going to last 59 minutes. I know my live chats usually last like three hours, but I took off today and tomorrow because to try and focus on this deep dive I'm doing on that 136 page document that was released four weeks ago. And I've been spending many hours every day for the past month trying to finish this thing. So hopefully it'll be done within the next seven to 10 days. Um, yeah. So this is lasting about 59 minutes. I never ban anybody. So if you get banned by a moderator, maybe you need to go to counseling. I try not to curse, uh, but I cannot promise anything. I, oh my God, 143 people already. All right. I do have the video of what happened in court. So I'm going to just play this and get to the stuff you guys want to see. Uh, please hold one moment. All right. Hopefully you're going to be able to hear this. This is um, about three minutes long. This is what happened in court today. So for people who have, or don't know, Rick's lawyers quit because we'll get to that in a second. I have a PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah, it's not funny. It's really sad. So, I mean, Abby and Libby deserve justice as soon as possible. Their families, this is ridiculous. Another few years that they're going to be every day wondering what happened. And also say what you want about Rick. I'm not totally convinced of his guilt. He could be an innocent person who's been in prison for a year. He deserves a timely trial. So all this outside shenanigans is nonsense. All right, so you can see that. I'm gonna do this. This is like uh, uh, three minutes or so. If you can, I'm gonna push play now. If you say, if you can't hear, say, Tom, we can't hear. Here we go, one, two, three. All right, we are on the record in the state of Indiana versus Richard Allen, 08 CL 12210 MR1. Thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. McClellan, Mr. Luttrell, for your patience. Um, we've had an unexpected turn of events, ladies and gentlemen. Um, earlier this afternoon, the defense attorneys have withdrawn their representation of Mr. Allen, Mr. Baldwin made an oral motion to withdraw. I granted that oral motion to withdraw and Mr. Rosie will be submitting a written motion to withdraw, I'm assuming within the next couple of days. Um, they have confirmed with the court that Mr. Allen's uh, financial situation remains static, meaning he is continuing to be entitled to appointed counsel. I will reach out to public defenders to make that appointment. Um, as Mr. Allen is now without counsel, I've ordered him transported back to the Department of Correction. Mr. McClellan, I know that we have already scheduled a hearing in the Carroll Circuit Court October 31st at 9 a.m. I'd like to maintain that hearing if we can, please. Um, I think at that point um, we can have counsel appointed. Um, I'd like to set a new trial date, obviously. I don't believe counsel will be prepared within the next couple of months to try a case of this magnitude in January. Um, so we'll set dates for the trial. I think we need to set a date as well for the suppression hearing that was filed now by former counsel. Um, I have asked the attorneys um, to provide all of the discovery previously provided to back to the state of Indiana. 
I know I entered a protective order on the discovery, and honestly, I don't remember when that was. I think it was in April of this year, perhaps, maybe sooner. But the attorneys had been ordered to provide all of that discovery back to the state. And if you would maintain that until such time as it can be turned over to successor counsel, I would appreciate that, Mr. McClellan. Um, I've also asked the defense attorneys to um, cooperate with successor counsel. They're not required to do that, but I think that they will in the best interests of um, Mr. Allen. They're not required to provide any of their work product, um, but they will be required and have indicated that they will cooperate with successor counsel. So obviously without counsel, Mr. Allen's hearing cannot proceed. I apologize that I know many of you have been waiting for several hours. I know Mr. McClellan, you and your staff, and you had some witnesses here um, that came earlier to have the hearing, but clearly this is outside of our control. So is there anything, Mr. McClellan, that you'd like to state for the record? No, Your Honor, I think we're going to address the other issues at the October 31st court date. With that being said, then, we are in recess. Thank you. I'll see you in October. Slam that laptop. Yeah, so I'm um, sorry, um, I have to move my microphone. Crazy stuff going on. So Rick has no attorneys. I, I don't know what to say. So for people who are unaware, let me share this presentation, my PowerPoint slides. I have four PowerPoint slides that I'm just going to give like an update for people who don't know what's going on, which I honestly don't totally know what's going on. Uh, Uh, yeah, so I think this hearing was about, over the past few weeks, there's been discussions about a crime scene photo leak of the bodies of Abby and Libby that were apparently, somebody took a picture of a laptop um, and started spreading it around. So the rumor that's unconfirmed, uh, please don't write people's first uh, full names in the chat, just do um, initials, because this is not totally confirmed. A former employee at Baldwin's firm had access to crime scene photos. He may have been helping with this 136 page document. That's not confirmed. Um, apparently he shared it with a friend of his who he knew had been interested in the Delphi case. And this person allegedly committed suicide on October 11th after police questioned him about his involvement of sharing these photos. So then that man at one point shared with another man online who posted the F so there's a picture of a tree that supposedly has the letter F or a symbol or uh, Odinist rune in the shape of an F. So that person got it from like these two other guys and posted it on Facebook, which apparently one of these guys was upset that Barbara McDonald had been on court TV with a diagram that showed that was maybe blood spatter and not a drawn F on a tree with Libby's blood. So it, it was Libby's blood on the tree. And there's debate about whether it was maybe her hand had made this um, blood in this form or whatever. So apparently one of these guys was upset and he wanted it to be known that this F tree, what it really looks like. So it was posted on Facebook and there's been drama ever since and an investigation by Indiana State Police to try and figure out who uh, leaked these photos. So Baldwin, Rick's attorneys are public defenders Andrew Baldwin and Brad Rosie. So this is not the first time that Baldwin's firm caused something to leak. And I'll get to your comments in a minute. Hi, everybody. Um, back in December, I'll try and get to this quick. There's a guy in Carroll County named Brandon Woodhouse who has been in trouble with the law for quite a few times. And he filed a lawsuit against Carroll County Sheriff and Tobe Lesenby saying that when he was in Carroll County jail, they mistreated him. So Baldwin heard about this and he contacted Brandon Woodhouse to say, my, my client, Rick Allen, has been mistreated. Can maybe I get some information from you to you know help out my case? So at one point, apparently, Baldwin's firm maybe typed up the names of folders that were, were in the discovery. Discovery is evidence. So it was just like a list of the folders on this thumb drive or something. Um, like it would just say whatever witness for interview, whatever date. It was not actually the files inside the folders. So I guess the rumor is that Baldwin started typing an email to Brad Rosie, but I guess when he wrote B R A, it autofilled to Brandon Woodhouse, and he did not notice that error. 
So Woodhouse got this. He maybe shared it with this other guy on Facebook who was posting it over the past few months or the past month or so. Actually, it's been almost two months, I think, that people have been sharing this discovery stuff online. So it might have been at least two times that Baldwin's firm messed up. So maybe today, I don't know what happened if Baldwin and Rosie went into chambers with the judge before this hearing and said, and she was like, you guys have totally screwed up. This is what your punishment is going to be. And maybe at that point, Baldwin said, yeah, I'm going to just resign from this case, which is crazy. Um, I don't know. So I just want to, there's uh, three other slides. So today, um, there was something filed by a lawyer, David Hennessy, for Andrew Baldwin. Like I said, I'm just going to review the highlights or lowlights of this. So it was called Memorandum Regarding Possible Disqualification or Sanctions. Mr. Allen de has developed a strong and trusting bond with Mr. Baldwin. Disqualification of either of his court-appointed attorneys would greatly prejudice his right to counsel and a timely trial. The Sixth Amendment guarantees that in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Disqualification of counsel is an extreme remedy for an alleged or perceived violation of a court's order. Most, if not all, cases concerning disqualification of counsel involve conflicts of interest. There is no case allowing disqualification when an individual not party of the attorney's office or staff surreptitiously purloins, which basically I guess means steals, sorry, it means steals information from the attorney and disseminates it without permission or the attorney's knowledge. So they're kind of insinuating Baldwin didn't really know about this. Uh, two more slides. Sanctions require proof of knowing willful or intentional conduct, as do the rules of professional conduct. Here, the attorney's trust and office were violated without his knowledge, so that's without Baldwin's knowledge. Rule 1.6 requires disclosure by an attorney, not someone that purloined information without the attorney's knowledge. Commentary 16 to that rule states, quote, a lawyer must act competently to safeguard information relating to the representation of a client against inadvertent or unauthorized disclosure by the lawyer or other persons who are participating in the representation of the client or who are subject to the lawyer's supervision. The disseminators do not fit that definition. Well, if Baldwin is supposed to protect this evidence, he didn't do a good job. They continued, attorney Baldwin did nothing wrong. He was snookered and abused. The issue before the court is a horrible tragedy created by persons not related to the defense of Mr. Allen. There were three disseminators, one of which committed suicide after the law enforcement investigation began. It should be considered that nothing has been disclosed that won't be disclosed at trial or hearings. Well, I don't think the general public should have seen Abby and Libby's dead bodies. Like Libby was naked. So I, this was only stuff that the jury should have seen, not the general public. So I don't agree with that comment. It should also be considered that there have been volumes of information disseminated by law enforcement and or others not at all linked to the defense team. If anybody's followed this case for six and a half years, like law enforcement didn't tell us anything. Well, we can get into debates about what, what they discussed or was, whether it was relevant or not. All right, last slide. Mr. Baldwin trusted a friend to respect his office space. He was betrayed. Since that transgression, Mr. Baldwin has kept all Delphi related items locked in a room or locked fireproof file cabinet. Furthermore, defense counsel has put together a plan for curative action in which no items will be left unattended for even a second in any unlocked room. Why wasn't that why wasn't that in place for the past 11 months? When any documents or item from the case is needed for preparing the case, the person using the documents or items will either one lock the door behind them when they leave even for lunch or bathroom or two return those documents or items to the room dedicated to the Delphi case and lock the door. As Mr. Rosie indicated, there are vast amounts of trial preparation materials, and it would be a setback to the defense to have to relocate them. This is the person's mistakes, not mine. <laughs> Under these circumstances, Mr. Baldwin has taken sufficient curative action. Should the court believe there should be some sanction the court could order to 24 hours of representation without compensation? I'm not sure what that means respectfully submitted by David Hennessy, who is a Indiana lawyer on behalf of Baldwin. So I don't know what happened after 
Baldwin and everybody shut up. So your comments, let's see what you guys are all arguing about. Um, so what are my thoughts? I don't know. Honestly, like all, all of our thoughts mean nothing in this case. It's what's going to be presented to the jury and what they think. So, I mean, obviously we're all just speculating, kind of being driven crazy about what's happening at this point. Mm, let's see. Hi, Daniel. Do we know if we get to read some sort of transcript of the oral arguments presented by Baldwin to recuse themselves from the case? Uh, she said that Baldwin did it orally and Rosie, she expects to do submit something within the next few days. I, I, I don't know. There was an affidavit submitted today. It said it was Richard Allen, but sometimes when the defense writes a letter, they include the name Richard Allen. So I don't know if it was directly a letter from Rick, maybe saying, I like my attorneys, please don't fire them. I don't know. As I said before, at this point, even with Rick saying he was there from noon to 1.30, I'm, I'm going to review all this in my 29-hour deep dive. Um, there, I still have a lot of questions about Rick and a lot of coincidences that happen if he, if he truly was there noon to 1.30. So I, I don't know. I mean, he, he deserves a fair trial. It's not for us to really decide, although obviously we all can share our opinions. Um, Charmaine, hi. I guess Rosie pulled Rick's wife and mother before the hearing. They came back in, grabbed their stuff, and left weeping. Yeah, I mean, if they think Rick is innocent, um, then they're upset that they're going to have to wait like another year for him to get out of prison. However, Every time I think, like, is Rick truly innocent or not? I come back to this. Document 52 of the unsealed documents from June. On April 3rd, 2023, Richard M. Allen made a phone call to his wife, Kathy. In that phone call, Richard M. Allen admits several times that he killed Abby and Libby. Investigators had the phone call transcribed, and the transcription confirms that Rick admits that he committed the murders of Abby and Libby. He admits several times within the phone call that he committed the offenses as charged. He's charged with felony murder, which is basically charged as being bridge guy. So what did he say in this call? I don't know. I don't know. But it obviously wasn't whatever. His wife uh, uh, ends the phone call abruptly. And then it said that was dated April 20th. So for 17 days, it said there was absolutely no more phone calls between Rick and his wife. So. Obviously, if they're still showing up in June and today, they're, um, I guess they're still talking or started talking again, but it says below in this other document, which may have been document 58, that the defendant has admitted that he committed the offenses that he is charged with no less than five times while talking to his wife and his mother on the public jail phones. So why is this guy calling his wife and mom and saying, I killed Abby and Libby? Why is he not? implicating other people if he did it with other people. I know the defense came up with this totally made up quote, like Rick said, oh, in this 136 pages, Rick, I'm, I don't know if you guys read this. It, it's gonna, I'm going to go through the entire thing in my deep dive. But the defense said, Rick may have said something like, I'm scared that the Odin scars are going to kill my family. So that's why I confessed, or, or that's why I called my wife and said, I killed those girls. That's what I remember from this made up quote, which they had a footnote at the bottom that said, oh yeah, this Rick never actually said this. So make sure you read those footnotes. So from that fake quote, I kind of took, I killed those girls as maybe being a true quote from Rick's April 3rd call to his wife. I guess time will tell. I don't know. I mean, all of us are speculating what he truly said. The defense obviously didn't even reference exactly what he said. It's like, why make up a real, a fake quote when you could just include the transcription? I think prosecutor Nick is waiting to reveal it during the trial and play maybe the bridge guy audio and then play Rick's phone call to say, do you think this sounds similar? I don't know, maybe at some point the prosecution will do a filing where they do reveal exactly what was um, said in that call. 
Hi, Mark. I don't think the gag order applies to the lawyer, the former lawyers now. I don't know. It's not going to look very good for them to be on TV, like blabbing. I mean, like this is a horrible look for lawyers to resign. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to think, to be honest. Funky monkey. She kind of, she looks kind of ticked, you think? I'm just looking for quotes. We have 39 more minutes left. I do have a bunch of new spreadsheets. Oh, yay. And one of them is like, what is Rick innocent or guilty? And I don't know if we're going to have time to get to that. It'll be in my deep dive. Uh, F. Duncan, given the nature of the trial and case, law enforcement will take as long as they can to ensure they get the right guy and there's no miscarriage of justice. So the defense put forward this Odinist theory, which I'm sure you guys have heard. Like they, there was this, like a few, like maybe three or four, I know it was like three guys in law enforcement uh, wrote this Odin report where they kind of said they thought these five or six guys were involved in this ritualistic sacrifice of white girls because one of their moms was mixing with somebody who's non, not white. I don't know. As I was reading that 136 pages, I there was a lot of stuff that was suspicious about some of these guys. But I know at least four of them have since stated publicly that they're very angry with the defense for putting their names out there. And it seems like they're more angry than they are scared that they're about to be arrested for being involved. I don't know. And just to say, it seems like attorneys are immune to what they say in these court filings. And as has been stated, for the most part, the defense only referenced thing that, uh, things that law enforcement had put into this Odin report. So I don't know. There's a lot of stuff to talk about that. We have other things to do. Hi, Chris. I agree. I'm no longer convinced of Alan's guilt. Same with the case in Idaho, the four students slaughtered, some funky, uh, I don't, I try not to highlight curse words. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, at this point, I'm about 85% at Rick is involved. And I, as always, I will show my reasons um, in my deep dive video. I don't know what that is. Um, hi, SP74. Now we'll never know what Judge Gull would have done to Baldwin but he may still be in trouble. Well, it seems like she told him he was going to be in trouble and he just decided to resign. Like, I don't know why, why are they both giving up on Rick? I don't know. And what happens next? So I don't even know what this October 31st court hearing is about. Does anybody know? Uh, Chico, so what reason did they give for quitting? We don't know exactly yet, but... It seems like they were going to be in trouble. And instead of being replaced, I guess they said, well, we, we'll, we will resign instead. Um, I I have no, hi, Charmaine. I have no insider info ever. A lot of YouTube channels said they have like inside sources. I have outside sources, like seriously. And just in case anybody's wondering, I have not seen these photos. I have no interest in seeing them. I have no concerns that I'm going to be involved in this mess at all. Hi, Shane. 2028, still looking forward to catching a Delphi. Oh, my God. I, I don't know. I hope this ends as soon as possible for Abby and Libby and their families. And also for Rick, if he's innocent, then he should not be in prison for whatever, three years. Hi, Adrian. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tom, for covering this. Have you seen any videos by Sleuth Intuition interviewing one of the Odinist PW? I have seen both of them, and I did find him to be credible, PW, in his denials of being involved. He said that he got in a fight, not in a fight, but a disagreement with, I, I try to use like initials of these accused guys since they have never been arrested. So he said he got in a disagreement with BH, I believe it was before the murders, 
where he said that BH came to his house in Delphi where they do these Asatru ceremonies or whatever. And he heard that BH had been going to church with his family. So PW said, you have to make a choice between church or Asatru. And he chose church at least, or not, at least not a definite thing to Asatru. So PW said, I think he said beat bricks, which means like get out of my house. And in the 136 pages, the ex-wife of BH said it happened in the woods by a river. And PW said that's not true. And also Abby and Libby were killed in by a creek. And the defense like referred to it as a river throughout the thing. So thank you, Adrian. I will reply to your email hopefully within the next few days. Sick Nisco. Those attorneys literally created an earthquake out of nowhere, then dipped like nothing. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah, SP, why is it why isn't Rosie remaining? If the leaks came out of Baldwin's office, why would Rosie not remain on? It, it's crazy. So are they is Gull gonna uh, um appoint two new public defenders? Or just one? I don't know. And if Rick confessed on April 3rd, was part of his not changing his plea with the court because maybe his attorneys were saying, we believe we can, I don't want to say get you off, but you know what I mean. Um, and people speculated, well, are Baldwin and Rosie looking to, I don't want to accuse them of like shady behavior. But some people said, well, is Baldwin looking to write a book about his career at some point? And if there's never, if Rick says, okay, I'm guilty, then there's never going to be a trial and there's never going to be a chance for Baldwin to have a chapter saying, this is how we helped get Rick to be found innocent. I don't know. I, I don't know what's about to happen. This case is crazy. And I don't know if Rick, truly, if he truly is guilty, is he going to have a new attorney who's going to say, okay, let's, I don't know. If you're guilty, you're guilty. I don't know. Um, just to say, in this 136 pages, Holman and Liggett said that nothing was really found in the search of Rick's home, like no DNA, nothing that ties him to the crime scene other than his gun, which obviously we all know people are speculating, is that true? Like, is that science reliable that you can say that somebody who pulls back the slide on their gun and a cartridge pops out like it ends up about two feet from Libby's body. Can that truly be tied back to Rick's gun? I don't know. I mean, I was thinking even if this, if it's like an 80% reliability of this science, if they tested a million guys guns, that means like 200,000 guys could be falsely connected to this crime scene, which is not right, obviously. So I think they can prove that Rick is involved without that gun cartridge. Just one other thing before I move on. There apparently were rumors that two other men had their handguns confiscated. And so I would assume that the same testing center at Indiana State Police tested their guns against that unspent cartridge. And I guess it came back that they did not match. So when police finally got Rick's gun in October last year, they were surprised that it came back saying, yes, this does match and all this other stuff. That's why they arrested him. I don't know. There's so many things to talk about. Yeah, people keep saying they ex don't expect a trial and that Rick is going to change his plea, but it's been a year on October 28th or whatever that his arrest was announced. Like, what's the holdup? Even after he confessed like six months ago in April, I, I just can't figure out what's going on. Hi, Illegally Blind. Nice to see you. Danielle is, if I were Rick, I would be very worried that my new defense will not receive all the material and will be less committed to an active defense. Say what we will about his defense. They worked for him. No comment. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Hi, human animal. Are you up in the middle of the night in Australia? Uh, Alan's attorneys did not quit because he has no money. They just say that he still needs court uh, appointed counsel. Yeah, so Rick's wife sold their house for $250,000 in August, I think, but I don't know. 
I mean, she should not be punished for the actions of her husband if he truly is guilty. Shane says the man who unalived himself was going to jail for these leaks and the buck stops with the defense. It was on their watch. They had to quit. I, I don't know what the uh, punishment would have been for being involved with this, uh, Shane. Billy, amazing people who think freaking sticks. O-T-H. Billy, what are you smoking? Uh, Carol Carroll says, where's Shane Evans, the associate prosecutor and the former mayor? Who was the next to Slick Nick? Can anybody answer that? There's like an older guy. I don't know who that was. Gull said, I don't know. She said some new name that I had never heard in the beginning. Uh, yeah, please use initials so we don't like say people's names. Uh, 29 more minutes. <laughs> My next live chats, I'm not available on October 31st, which is the next hearing, but I will be doing November 2nd and November 5th because people in Europe have to stay up late. I feel bad. So Sunday, November 5th, people in Europe, plan your dinner around my live chat. Danielle says, if the defense's claim regarding the material that the prosecution withheld from discovery is true, it's hard to justify and not severely question Rick's guilt. I agree. I was very shocked by how long it seems to take the prosecution to hand over this evidence that they've had for six years. I thought it was totally unacceptable on the prosecution's part. However, the, pro the Carroll County prosecutor has other cases that they're working on. It's not a huge office and they have a huge amount of data, which I'm going to talk about this in my deep dive, but I mean, I just don't understand how they did not have a central location where if somebody's working on this case as a law enforcement or the prosecutor, like, where are they getting this information? It, was, it seemed like so scattered. It's really concerning that they're not organized. Hey, girl, hey, says Rick is a patsy. He is innocent. I don't totally agree with that. You can debate my spreadsheet when I share it at some point. The simulation. I hope he doesn't get Jeffrey before his trial. Jeffrey Epstein? I don't think so. Jeffrey tried to Jeffrey himself a few weeks before he got Jeffrey. So <laughs> people don't talk about that. Yeah, Jeffrey Epstein, he supposedly tried to commit suicide before he committed suicide, like two weeks before, and he went into court after. So I don't know why people think that was some shady stuff. I know like the camera was not on and people were sleeping, but we won't debate that. Um, amazing how people think sticks on the ground is a sign of some conspiracy. I don't know. As I was reading the Odinist theory, some stuff made sense. And at this point, not a lot does, which I'm going to go into it in my deep dive. Shane says, Carroll County Assistant DA don't know where Shane Evans was. Mm. Oh, God. Um... <laughs> Just looking for comments that we haven't discussed. Uh, hi, Cecil Hotel. Don't you think if a patsy was needed that Ron Logan would have been perfect? The FBI considered him and he is dead. No trial, no nothing. Yeah, you know, people get upset when I say Ron Logan was not bridge guy, but Ron Logan was not bridge guy. Whether he had anything else to do with this, I don't know, but. I mean, I don't know why, if he had anything to do with it, even if he was not bridge guy, why is he giving a bunch of TV interviews, taking people to the crime scene? It just doesn't add up to me, but okay. I said my last live chat was my spreadsheet was my last time reviewing Ron Logan as bridge guy. And I was serious. Digital. So any discovery that hasn't already been turned over to the defense will not have to be turned over for another year. So this is a good point. So, well, Slick Nick, the prosecutor, 
did some kind of filing within the past, let's say, week or 10 days. And he said that the prosecution has turned over all the discovery that they have up to this point. I know that there was a flurry of turnover dates, like September, like four dates in September. Um, so you're saying if the prosecution gets any more new discovery? No, I think Gull said that by the October 31st hearing, whatever it's about, Rick will have new public defenders. So anything between now and October 31st, the new public defender should get, I don't know a lot about um, anything. So if you wanna like watch people host Delphi live chats who have experience with the court system, like who've been arrested and have mug shots, you'll have to watch, like there's a plethora of people who have that experience. I don't, sorry. Um, scumbag Trav, Trav, hi, thank you for joining. All right. Hi, Frankie Figs. Hi, everybody. Oh, my God, 658 people. Uh, 24 more minutes. I don't know what else we really have to discuss. Um, it's crazy. I don't have enough time to do my Rick is innocent or guilty spreadsheet. Uh, yeah, I mean, Carol says, sincerely hope no more deaths as a result of this mess. I don't know what this man who apparently committed suicide on October 11th, what he was thinking from what I've heard, he started deleting his Reddit posts and Facebook. So he seemed to be stressing out that he was maybe going to get arrested and be shown on the news with like his mugshot saying he was responsible for sharing pictures of Abby and Libby, which, I mean, killing yourself is not a good option. He had a wife and a daughter. It's, it's, it's sad. human animals. So it seems that Gull told them they're out. I don't know if she said like, maybe these are going to be the consequences if you continue. And they said, okay, we're just going to resign. I don't know. Hi, Marianne. No, is there a video of Baldwin's oral motion to withdraw? I think it was maybe in the judge's chambers before they started. And I don't know if he's going to have to also submit something written. Hi, Matt Thomas. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Nice name. Uh oh, somebody complained that I have posed smiles. That's not true. And he also, oh, I just did it. He complained that I lick my lips too much. Sorry, but I'm talking and it dries out my lips. All right. Anyway, I highly suggest hosting live chats on YouTube. Rose says, Dave Hennessy is very correct. This case is fixed from the start, judge included, in my opinion. I don't know. What's your, be more specific. Are you rolling your eyes that I said be more specific? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I have seen definitely some things that are shady on everybody's part. Like in my deep dive video, I'm going to criticize pretty much everybody, the prosecution, defense, law enforcement, my YouTube subscribers, Rick, everybody. But I mean, I don't think any corruption in Carroll County has anything to do with this man walking on, across the bridge who points a gun at Abby and Libby. I mean, that has nothing to do with any uh, corruption that Liggett is involved with. And yes, I do get into like, like the entire, like everything that was in the 136 pages, I'm totally like breaking down and summarizing because it was so annoying. Oh my God, that document was annoying. I know a lot of you agree. Uh, let's see. Shane says, I wonder did Rick admit to the defense that he did it? They're, a they're on a gag forever either way. From what I've heard, uh, defense lawyers do, do not really want to know if their uh, def uh, client is guilty. Humanimal, can we uh, change this? Um, I have to use a different browser, so I kind of I don't have time to do it at this point, Humanimal. But for my next live chat, I'll try and remember to make it even shorter. Let me look at the chat to see how fast it's going. No, it's not that bad, I guess. I don't know. Maybe next time, Humanimal. <laughs> Cecil Hotel, when you're killing someone in daylight, you will speed it up, not take your time as if done out of eyesight. I, my face is red. Um, I have a 
spreadsheet that I made to see because of the defense, one of the most annoying parts of it, they said they had 92 like actions that one person, they're like one man alone would have had to do this. So I timed it out with and without like two things. And I do believe that one person could have done this and still be seen on 300 at 357, which you're gonna have to watch my five hour deep dive. And I'm going to include chapters in my deep dive so you guys can jump to whatever point you want or topic, whatever. Hi, Alec. Thank you for joining. Yeah, hopefully truth will be revealed at some point soon. I don't know. It's not looking too good. Billy, Rick's defense team was grasping at straws as is. Remember how they said he was being mistreated? Or yeah, at Westville. You really going to believe their Odinist BS? Yeah, they lied like six or seven times about Rick's conditions at Westville. And the warden on June 15th was like, no, you're not being honest. <laughs> Which is one of the things like I was like, mm, okay, um, about the defense. I didn't really trust them. Thank you, Adrian. That's enough for today or forever. I appreciate you, though. Michelle, thank you. I appreciate that. Is that Australian money? Shrimp on the Barbie. How many shrimps on the Barbie is $14.99 in Australia? Yeah, I have a McDonald's cup today. No Taco Bell. And I'm sweating. How much more time? Less than 20 minutes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no lip licking. Oh my gosh, how horrible. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Anyone see Rick coming in and out of uh, pri or prison? The courthouse? I do not know. I have not seen anything yet. Chico's mummy says, maybe Rick wrote a guilty letter to the court this time. Well, don't you think they would have changed his plea today? And instead of them resigning? I don't know. Will your deep dive be done before 1031? I hope so. I have, I took the entire 136 pages. Like I said, it was so annoying. I tried to like summarize it in a less annoying way. And then as I was thinking about it, I wrote down like all my different thoughts and I made spreadsheets. So I have like a 110 page word document, which is my script that I have to finish. It's almost finished. And then I have to transfer it to PowerPoint slides and figure out what I'm going to show on the screen. So yes, I'm hoping it's done by October 31st. Uh, hi, I haven't seen you in a while. You say libertarian. I don't know what that's about. Is it about me? Danielle, that's why I'm so confused about the defense council resigning. They seem to be really working hard for Rick. I think Rick would not be happy with this change and would be scared. I, I don't know. I guess we'll find out in the coming days or weeks. Christy, hello. He should not be at Westville, but a jail. I kind of agree with this. Um, I mean, I'm not that my opinion matters. Um, I'm fine with him going to Cass County, but people say they're concerned about his mental health at Westville. Westville apparently has 24-7 mental health and medical help. County jails have these guys, these mental health and uh, doctors come in once a week. So if you're concerned about his well-being, do you really want him to be somewhere where there's nobody really on staff to help him with any mental issues? And also, there's no way he can be in general population. I mean, I think we all agree, like, there's no way that he can be with, like, other people in jail who might attack him. So either way, he's going to be in a single cell. And the cell in Cass County is even smaller than the one in Westville. It's only like a foot, but still, I don't know. So I don't know what the right answer is. Like, I don't know. I, I do not think that they are punishing Rick by sending him to Westville. Carroll County Jail supposedly is a disgrace to humanity. Um, so I don't know that people really think of Tobe Lesenby, whatever. But Tobe, you guys, for like six years or five and a half years, he's heard like all these crazy conspiracy theories that people call him with. So I think it was legit that he was like, there's no way that we can have Rick be in our 
jail that has like five employees. So I don't think that Toe was necessarily trying to uh, punish Rick by saying, you can't stay here. Hi, Anna. Who the heck does the writing for those law firms? They're filing red like a creative writing exercise. Yeah, I said, there's three things I'm going to say. What is it? It was like, they should be charged with crimes against English literature. It's going to be required reading for actual prisoners of war at Guantanamo Bay. And I wanted to print it out and eat it just so I didn't have to continue reading it. Next. Um, <laughs> Literally, I've like spent over 200 hours on this thing over the past month, like every day, so many hours. Anyway, don't cry for me, Argentina. How much more time? 14 minutes. Grace, he's not been proven guilty of anything. He needs to be let out. You are correct, but from the Carroll County local rules, it says anybody charged with um, murder should not be given bail which I don't even know. First of all, I do agree. It's totally ridiculous that there are a lot of motions that have not been decided on, including he's been in jail for a year and he has not had a bond or bail hearing. But I don't even, like I said, I don't know why it's even an option since he's charged with murder. And apparently if you're charged with murder in Carroll, Carroll County, you don't even get that hearing or to get out on uh, bail. Hi, Nedra. Nedra hopes Rick confesses in open court. At what point is that going to happen? Hi, Marshall. Nice to see you. Perhaps they were threatened and families. I don't know what that's about. Sorry. Jenny, yeah, I don't know why Rosie would quit if only Baldwin's office was incompetent. Hi, Sherry. I don't know about that, but thank you. Adjusted face. So says the same prosecution that lied in the PCA. We have not heard that confession. I'll wait. Okay. We might have to wait for a long time. Uh, the PCA, my basic overview of the lies. And so the Frank's hearing is supposed to be, maybe that's uh, the October 31st thing, where the defense is saying that Tony Liggett lied in the PCA to get a search warrant of Rick's house and car. And that everything found at Rick's house should be thrown out because Liggett lied. The only thing that I feel like Liggett lied about was the muddy witness saying that the guy she saw was wearing a blue jacket, where in this 136 pages, it was revealed that the 300 muddy witness said he was wearing a tan or light colored jacket, which to me, yes, if somebody says tan or light colored, Liggett lied by saying blue. However, I noted that the defense kept referencing her statement was from 2017. So after 2017, did she say, okay, maybe it was blue? I don't know. In that case, Liggett would not have been lying. Regarding the muddy bloody part, I don't think that's a flat out lie. I think she, she said um, it appeared the guy had been something along the lines that he had recently gotten into a fight. So what are characteristics of somebody who recently got into a fight? like a black eye or blood on their clothes. Like that's only like two like disheveled clothes. That's like three things that someone would say that person looked like they got in a fight. And so I believe like saying muddy and bloody, I believe that's not a total lie. At one point I was thinking that, okay, just give them the Frank's hearing to argue it out in court. But I think the PCA includes plenty of other things that warranted Rick's home being searched. Um, I had one other thought, but I forgot it. 10 more minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah, this, so this is gonna be interesting. Shane, hopefully this new defense will have the cop on not to go down the Odinism road. It's farcical. Well, it's gonna be interesting that they put it forward. I honestly don't think that Baldwin or Rosie read that entire 136 pages their signature was on it but i found like 50 errors it's like it was a sloppy mess anyway sorry i'm just looking for comments
Anna says, my best guess is Rick's admissions were too detailed, but perhaps he insists upon pleading not guilty. In that case, the attorneys may not be able to proceed. Well, it's going to be interesting to see if he uh, revealed anything about the crime scene that only the killer would know or only a bridge guy would know. Adrian, do you know if they have a recording of the confession? Yes, they have it on audio because everything is taped, every phone call. And everything in Rick's cell is videotaped, but it's not, um, there's no microphone on his cell. But obviously they could sync whatever happened on that day. I'm curious to see like what went down that day on April 3rd, because Rick met with the intern and the private investigator from his defense team. And it seems like after that meeting, he went back to his cell and placed his phone call and he confessed. So A, what was presented to him at that meeting? B, like what kind of body language is on video? Like, is he pacing around for an hour? Is he like crying on his bed and then finally picks up the tablet and calls his wife and says, I killed those girls? I don't know. We'll find out in five years. Eight minutes, and I have to stop. Sorry. Nobody cares. Um, yeah, so exactly, Judy. Hi, Judy. His attorneys had to come up with a reason for Rick confessing to the murders. Right after April 3rd is when they said, oh, he's lost his mind, and now they're this Odinist theory. So, Judy, for the win. <laughs> Hi, Malgajada. It's almost time for bed in Poland. Hopefully you didn't stay up too late. Oh my gosh. Billy says, if you believe Odinist stuff, please send me money for a Nigerian prince who is trapped. I don't know. Some, some of it made sense, but overall, I was like, I don't think so. Adjusted fate. The prosecutor, Nick, desperately needed a confession. I agree. If they're saying that there's hardly any evidence found, I totally agree. But why is Rick confessing? That's the huge issue. I, I don't think he was confessing because he was scared of guards who have Odin patches, please. It's like if he if Rick is so mentally upset about being in prison, don't you think he's going to do things to get away from those Odin guards, not confess, where it's like, oh, the punishment for confessing is you never get away from that cell and those guards. It's like, it doesn't make sense to me what Rick is up to. So that's that. Anyway. <laughs> Hi, living vicariously, HD. You are correct. I compared the leaked index with the interview dates in this 136 page thing. This whole thing confirms the leaked discovery product index that was floating around by that guy on Facebook was legitimate, correct? See, so why am I getting a timeout for agreeing with Anna? I don't know. I don't do any timeout. Sorry. ED, on a scale of zero to 10, how convinced are you today that Rick is the killer? Zero, not being convinced at all. I said I'm about like 85%, so that'd be 8.5. Um, I'm going to review it. Like, like I totally go through it in a spreadsheet. Um, you guys, I'm going to share my spreadsheet and you guys can pause. Hold on. I'm not going to review it. I'm going to show it on screen. Let's see. For anybody who wants to at some point. Nobody wants to, but let's see. It's called Rick. Is Rick guilty or innocent? Mm. I'm just resizing. Oh, crap. Hold on. Uh, please wait one moment. All right. I'm going to share. I'm going to share this. I'm going to scroll down 
for future reference, anybody who wants to see a sneak peek of my reasons why I think Rick, oh God, that looks too big. Hold on. I mean, pl one moment, please. Somebody once complained that I said, hold on, that it's rude. So please stand by. All right, um, that's too many. All right, here we go. That's that. I'm going to scroll down. Why is that doing that? Sorry. So you, um, yeah. So there's like five coincidences that do not make sense to me. Uh, if Rick is was really there from noon to, what's going on here? Sorry. Uh, so that's that. Hopefully, if anybody wants to see that. You'll figure it out. Four more minutes, and then I'm abruptly ending. I'm sweating. <laughs> Hi, Bet. I thought Shane Evans left his job as mayor to be the new assistant prosecutor. Yeah, he's been for about two years. I don't know why he was not sitting at the table. He didn't get to sit at the big boy's table. Salty Beach. Hi. This case is beyond bananas it's it's sad that i mean this happened and then like law enforcement mistakes for since the beginning has prevented justice and these families just like day after day wondering what, what happened and if justice will be served on the right person i don't know three minutes um. <laughs> Oh, I'm like way behind on comments. What a surprise. I'm ha a half hour behind. Oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Tom live chat if I'm not a half hour behind. Uh... Adjusted fate. The bullet was found days after law enforcement had released the crime scene. The bullet won't make it to trial. I've heard various rumors, and I don't think it needs to be included to prove that Rick was involved. Oh, this is good. This is a good time for people in Europe, right? Oh my gosh, what are you saying, Charmaine? Tom is dressing up as Luther Vandross for Halloween and trick or treating on the thirty first. That's why I'm unavailable. Oh my gosh, I wish. All right, we're wrapping it up, people. 640 people. Yeah, I don't know what's up, what's going to happen next. It's a disaster. So October 31st is some kind of hearing. I guess we'll find out in the coming weeks. My deep dive hopefully will be done in seven to 10 days. I will do a live chat around 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern, 2 a.m. UK on November Thursday, November 2nd. I'm just going to discuss the same thing. Whatever happens at October 31st, or sorry, yeah, October 31st hearing and my deep dive, if you guys want to talk about, I don't think anybody's going to watch the entire thing. I have no idea how long it's going to be at this point, but it's going to be really long. Um, what else? Oh, so Sunday the 5th, I'll probably do like 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, which is 5 p.m. London, maybe 7 a.m. Monday on Sydney, Australia. Somebody last time, I would just write Australia's time zone. And somebody said, um, Australia is a big company or a country. We have different time zones. So I replied, well, you need to move to the time zone I specify. So from now on, I'll specify Sydney, Australia for the Australian people. Thank you, everybody, for joining. 59 minutes. I have to stop before one hour. I'm sorry if I missed your comment. Hopefully, people were polite. Um, I don't know what's going to happen in this case, but... Just a reminder, it's all about Abby and Libby and their families, hopefully, finally finding out who did this. If it's not Rick, then he does need to be released as soon as possible. Bye. Thank you.